Python is a high-level, dynamic programming language loved by many for its simple syntax and shallow learning curve. Python's flexibility means it's used everywhere, from web development to microcontrollers, small automation scripts to large-scale AI and machine learning projects. Python's focus is on writing elegant code without hiding away lots of complexity with language magic. Today, we'll speed run the basics of Python for devs coming from another language. So grab your notebook, get your typing fingers ready, and let's go. Python is included in most Linux distributions and Mac OS by default, but make sure you have the most up-to-date version by following the instructions on python.org. Create a Python file using the .py extension, then create your first variable by using the variable name followed by an equal sign and the variable value. By convention, variable names in Python are written in snake case. All variables in Python are mutable, so there's no need for any var, let, or const keywords here. Python variables are dynamically typed, so you can change their type at runtime. And Python has four primitive types, int, float, string, and bool, and you can convert between them by using the type name as a function. If what you're trying to convert isn't a valid instance of the new type, you'll get a type error. Ints are whole numbers, floats have a decimal place, bools are true or false with a capital T and F respectively, and you can define strings using single or double quotes. You can also use triple quotes to define a multi-line string. There's also the special value none, with a capital N used to denote the absence of a value. Add variables together using the plus operator, subtract with minus, multiply with an asterisk, divide with a slash. A double asterisk will raise a value to a power, and a double slash will divide and floor. The percent sign is used for modulo. Use any of these operations followed by an equal sign to apply the operation and reassign to the current variable. To compare variables, use double equals for equality, and both less than and greater than can be transformed into their inclusive counterparts by suffixing with an equal sign. You can also use the is keyword to check if two variables represent the same object in memory. To print the value of your variables to the console, use the print function. Print takes a variable number of arguments, and its arguments can be of any type. Everything in Python is an object, and every object has a string representation. This includes functions, so you can print the print function. Arguments to print will be separated by a single space. Python has four main compound data types. Create a list using square brackets. A list is a resizable array that can contain any object. Lists can grow or shrink and can mix and match the types of their items. You can access list elements with index notation, and like any good programming languages, list indices start at zero. I'm looking at you, MATLAB. Add items to a list using .append or remove them with .pop. A tuple is like an immutable list and is defined with parentheses. These can't be edited in any way, removing items, adding items, or changing the items within them. A dictionary is a key value store, created using curly braces and separating the key and value with a colon. Values can take any type, but keys must be hashable and will always be unique in the same dictionary. Access values in a dictionary using the key in square brackets, or set new values using the same syntax. You can delete values from a dictionary using the del keyword. A set is a collection of unique hashable items. It's also defined with curly braces braces, but without the key value pairs. An empty pair of curly braces will create a dictionary though, so use the set function to initialize an empty set. Use if, followed by a boolean condition and a colon to start managing your control flow. This creates a new block, which is represented using significant white space. There ain't no curly braces here. You can also use variables directly in the if statement, as every value in Python can be truthy or falsy. Extend your conditional with elif and else clauses. While loops will run until a boolean condition is false, and will reevaluate before every iteration. You can use the for x in y syntax to iterate over y, storing the current value in the variable x. There are no C style for loops in Python, so if you just want to iterate over numbers, use the range function. You can use the continue keyword to skip an iteration, or the break keyword to exit the loop early. Functions in Python are defined using the def keyword, followed by the function name, then the function parameters in parentheses and a colon. This creates a new scope, so remember to indent your function body by four spaces. Function arguments can have default values defined with an equal sign, but optional arguments arguments have to come after required arguments. Use the return keyword to return values from the function. Returning nothing will return none, and you can return as many values as you like, which can be destructured by the caller. This actually returns a tuple under the hood, so you don't have to destructure it. Call functions using parentheses, and optionally use keyword argument syntax to specify which value is for which parameter. Python supports object-oriented programming using classes, defined using the class keyword. Functions defined in class scopes will become methods on instances of that class, and take self as the first argument. There are a number of 
of special methods denoted by double underscores surrounding their names, commonly referred to as magic or dunder methods. Use dunder init to define the constructor for new objects and set object properties using self.propertyName equals value. You can then access these on object instances using dot notation. Dunder str returns a string and is used to define the string representation of an object, which is what you'll see when you print it out. There are a whole host of other dunder methods which can be found in the Python documentation and allow you to overload common operations like addition, subtraction, indexing, and more. Python code that you want to reuse across projects is stored in modules. These are just other .py files that you can import code from. Anything at the top level of a Python file is exported, so no need to export explicitly. Use import to import a whole module, or use from x import y to specify which objects you would like to import, be they functions or classes or constants. You can use the as keyword to alias your imports. Beware, any top level code in your imported files will be run when the file is imported, so make sure you don't produce any side effects. If you have code that you want to run only when that module is run directly from the terminal, you can use if dunder name equals dunder main as a guard. Python comes with a standard library of packages that you can import in any Python code without having to install any additional software. The standard library is extensive, including support for date times, random number generation, performance benchmarking, functional programming helpers, and even a full-blown HTTP server. If you want to use third-party packages, you'll have to install them with a package manager. By default, Python comes with pip, but there are others available. If you want to see why I never use pip for large projects, you can watch this video here. And if you're enjoying this whistle-stop tour of Python, why not give it a like and subscribe to the channel to be notified about future content. Once you've installed the third-party package using pip install, you can import it from your Python code as normal. If you want to see what packages are available, I recommend taking a look at PyPI, the Python package index, which is where pip installs its packages from. To work with files, use the open function to create a file handle. You can then read from the file line by line, read all the lines at once into a list, or just read the entire contents of the file. Specify the open mode as R for reading, W for writing, or A for appending to a file. Using W plus or A plus will allow you to write and read or append and read respectively. Close the file handle using the dot close method. Alternatively, the open function provides a context manager, which uses a with clause. Context managers are great because they'll automatically run cleanup code when the scope exits, even if it errors. This is fantastic if you don't want to have to remember to close your files every time. Exceptions in Python are raised rather than returned, and will bubble up the stack until they're caught or crash the program. Catch exceptions with a try except block. You can catch specific types of exceptions and access the exception itself using the as keyword. You can have as many except clauses as you like, or you can add a finally clause that will always run, even if an exception is raised and not caught. Phew, that was a lot to cover so quickly. Did you get all of that? If you think there's anything important I missed, let me know in the comments. Alternatively, if you're ready to truly become a Python expert, why not watch this video on my roadmap for mastering the Python language?